Welcome back to part two of the Planetary Interaction Single Planet P3 Guide. Now, where were we? Finally, we want to add our P1 processors. For a single hub star network, we simply place our processors around our launch pad hub. How many processors depends upon the volume of resources we are collecting. Remember that each P1 processor uses up 6,000 units per hour, but your collection rate depends heavily upon the extractor cycle time that you use. If you set your extractors for 30 minute cycles, then your rate will be 20 times as much as if you had used 96 hour cycles. So for a casual low maintenance 96 hour colony, you may only need a single processor. If you're going all in and running frequent 30 minute purges, then you may want several. A brief peek ahead, though, shows that even with an elite command center, we can never have more than about 16 or so extractors, simply because we run out of power grid. Assuming that we want other buildings such as a launch pad and other processors, of course. So, don't go overboard with processors. In the end, we'll only have the grid for one advanced processor creating our P3 product, being fed by only two advanced processors creating our P2 products, and in turn being fed by maybe four or more basic processors creating our P1 products. Remember though that we need at least four basic processors because we need to process four raw materials. Now we add our advanced processors, two of them to process our P2 material and then one more to process our P3 material. Just like the basic processors, place them around the launch pad hub. We'll probably never use more than these, because our bottleneck is with the basic processors. So our spare CPU and grid typically goes towards either more basic processors, or, more likely, towards more extractors. Now it's time to get some work done. For each of your processors, select the product that you want them to create. Remember to have at least one basic processor converting each raw resource into a P1 material. Electrolytes, oxygen, plasmoids, and water. Then set the advanced processors to creating each of the P2 and P3 materials, synthetic oil, superconductors, and of course, Ukomi superconductors. Then, fire up all of your first line extractors and get them pulling the raw resources at whatever cycle time fits your own schedule and play style. Set their routing straight into your launchpad hub. You can do this quickly by first double-clicking the extractor to auto-start the scan, then double-click the cycle you wish to select, then double-click the unrouted product to start a route, then double-click the launch pad to set the route's destination. Remember to submit all your changes when you're done with all the extractors. Now that we have the routes coming into our storage hub, let's send them towards the proper processors. Just click the launch pad and go to the routes list and send any of them towards the processor that requires them. For example, select one of the Ionic Solutions routes, then press the Create Route button, and double-click the basic processor that is creating electrolytes. Then, route some noble gas to the oxygen processor, suspended plasma to the plasmoids processor, and aqueous liquids to the water processor in exactly the same way. We set these routes from the routes list because we may not have any actual product yet in our storage hub. Remember that we only just started extracting these things a few minutes ago. Now we want to send the processed P1 items back to our storage hub. Go to the electrolytes processor and go to its products list and route the completed electrolytes back into the launch pad. Do the same for the oxygen, plasmoids, and water. Now that we have all our P1 routes coming into our storage hub, we can use those to route them to the P2 processors in exactly the same way. Route your water and plasmoids into the superconductors processor, and route your oxygen and electrolytes into the synthetic oil processor. Then, go to those processors and route the superconductors and the synthetic oil back into the launch pad storage hub. By now, it should be obvious what to do in our last step. Click on the Launchpad Storage Hub and go to the Routes list. Select the superconductors and route them to the Ukomi Superconductors Processor. Then select the Synthetic Oil and route that to the Ukomi Superconductors Processor. Finally, click
click on the Ukomi Superconductors processor and route the actual Ukomi Superconductors right back into the Launchpad Storage Hub. And there we go. We now have a complete single planet P3 production chain. Now that we have the basic complete chain down, what should we do with our remaining CPU and power grid? Well, that depends entirely upon where your bottlenecks exist. More extractors is usually the best way to go. Just be sure to keep them in about the proper ratio so that you aren't extracting so much of one resource that it just collects in storage while your colony is waiting for the other resources. If you really want to do the math, then you could take a look at each of your extractors and calculate how much raw resources they are supplying per hour and then add some more extractors of the type that are supplying too little. If you don't want to do the math, then just let your colony run for a few days, and then see which materials you have too much of still sitting in your launch pad. For example, if you later see lots of extra aqueous liquids building up, then perhaps you need to extract more suspended plasma so that you can churn out superconductors more quickly. After some expansion and fine-tuning, we end up with a colony that looks like this. For a brief explanation of all the final changes, First of all, we've added extractors. After letting it run a few cycles, it was easy to see which resources were lacking, and so we added extractors to help keep the ratio correct. Also, you probably noticed some changes with the links. Instead of multiple links to each of the two major extraction sites, we instead route them through a single upgraded link. This is almost always more efficient, because for each upgrade level, the available capacity is doubled, but the CPU and power grid cost is less than double. By massing over our Launchpad Storage Hub, you can see the link saturation levels for all links where a route begins or ends at the Launchpad. The links have been upgraded enough to support every single extractor pulling resources on 30 minute cycles. The most efficient plan is, whenever I'm online and I know that I'll still be online a half hour later, then I'll set all extractors for another 30 minute cycle for maximum pull. At the end of my playtime, I'll set it to whatever cycle is just below when I next expect to be online. For example, if I think that I'll be back online in two days, then I'll set all extractors for a 23-hour cycle. When I return, then I'll set up a new cycle in the same way. Here ends the Planetary Interaction Single Planet P3 Guide. Thank you for joining me, and I hope that it was helpful and informative to you future Pi Bears. One final note, this AVL presentation was made prior to Command Center seeding, and thus it had to use some information from the Singularity server so be sure to double check all information once it is actually released. As always, if you have any questions, then feel free to ask in the chat.euni channel or in the forums.